You're listening to the Monday Market Highlights brought to you by Milford. Good morning. It's Monday the 30th of May and I'm Nick from Milford. Looking at the key economic news from last week, starting in New Zealand, the RBNZ continued with their hawkish stance and raised the OCR by a further 50 basis points to 2% in line with market expectations. What did come as a surprise was the bank's more aggressive rate hike forecast, which now showed the OCR reaching 3.5% by the end of the year and reaching an overall peak of just under 4%. This was up from the 3.55% peak outlined at the February monetary policy statement and illustrates the bank's determination to get inflation under control. In the US, we had the FOMC minutes released for the May policy meeting. The minutes confirm that the Fed plans to move expeditiously towards neutral and as a result is likely to see a further 50 basis point hike at the next meeting. In a slightly dovish tone, the Fed did note that they will be well positioned later this year to assess the effects of the policy firming, signalling the potential to return to 25 basis point hikes or a pause in the tightening cycle. Also in the US was the personal income and spending data. Personal income went up by 0.4% in April slightly below consensus of 0.5%. Personal spending increased 0.9% in April, ahead of market expectations of 0.7% and a sign that consumption was robust throughout April despite rising prices. In the UK, the PMIs were out last week, with services falling to 51.8 in May, well below consensus of 57 and down from 58.9 in April. Survey respondents noted that economic and geopolitical uncertainty had contributed to a slowdown in client demand. The manufacturing PMI also fell to a 16th month low of 54.6, slightly below forecasts of 55. Remember, if the index remains above 50, it implies these sectors are still expanding. Moving closer to home, we had the Australian retail sales and PMIs out last week. It was a strong retail sales print rising 0.9% in April, driven by food retailing and a sign of consumer resilience. The manufacturing PMI was strong in May, increasing to 58.5 from 55.7 in April. The services PMI was 53 in May, down from 56.1 in April, although this still indicates an expansion in the sector. Turning to equity news, Woodside Petroleum shareholders voted in favour of the merger with BHP's oil and gas business and the implementation date is set for the 1st of June. Eligible BHP shareholders will receive almost 915 million Woodside ordinary shares. That's one Woodside share for every 5.5 BHP shares held, as at the 26th of May. In addition to this, they will also receive the dividend. There are, however, some BHP shareholders that are not eligible to receive the stock, such as South African investors. At the same time, there are a portion of small shareholders, under 500 shares, that may opt out of the script deal and receive cash instead. Because of this, BHP have hired JP Morgan to set up a sale facility. This has created a risk hanging over the market as there is a potentially substantial block of shares to sell. In the US, the S&P 500 finally broke its seven-week losing streak and finished the week up 6.58%. During the week, we had NVIDIA Corporation report their Q1 earnings. A US tech company that designs, develops, and markets 3D graphics processes and related software. NVIDIA bet both sales and earnings expectations, but due to light guidance, the stock was down up to 10% on the day. Costco also reported last week with a strong result in a very challenging environment. Revenue was better than expected and margins held up reasonably well. Looking forward to the week ahead. In Australia, we have Q1 GDP out on Wednesday, and the market expects 3% growth for the quarter. In the US, we have the manufacturing and non-manufacturing ISM numbers. The market is forecasting these to be 54.5 and 56.4 respectively. Finally, we have the US employment and non-farm payrolls out on Friday. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next week.